the mantra of bringing people together and educating hasn't changed. And it really is all translated through proper marketing and sales. And to that, it's education, education, education. Welcome to the Cashflow Canucks podcast, where Canadian entrepreneurs and investors come to learn about wealth creation. Experts in their fields will join your host, Peter Lount, to share their successes, challenges, and discuss opportunities. Join me and my guest, Paul David Eskew, as we chat about sales and marketing in the mortgage industry while helping people improve themselves to be at their full potential. Paul talks about his passion for coaching, bringing people together, and helping people level up. He also gets into how his company has been empowering their clients to not only get the best rate, but also to save the most money over time and to be able to invest in the best way. Welcome and enjoy. All right, today on Cashflow Canucks, I have Paul David Eskew. Paul, welcome. Thanks so much. Stoked to be on the show. Awesome. Um, can you uh, maybe take the community a little bit, just tell them what you do? Sure. Yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, uh, I run a mortgage company or mortgage team called Level Up Mortgages. And uh, we're really focused on folks who are self-employed and people that approach their mortgage, not just to get the best rate, but to save the most money over time and to be able to invest in the best way, which is different than just getting the best rate. I'm sure we'll get into that uh, as we go. Yeah, no, very cool. Um, so how did you end up? This is not where you kind of started. What was your, how did you end up in this world? Yeah, not quite. And I think it, as, as you learn where I come from and a bit of like, I guess my just call, like things I really stand by, I think you'll get a bit more colored to why it's called level up mortgages. So I basically come from the tech and marketing world. I uh, grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and in between Toronto and Vancouver. And I've always um, believed in people improving themselves to be at their full potential through coming together with other smart individuals, through being properly educated, and through breaking bread. There's nothing better than breaking bread. Someone like literally having dinner with people and letting that calm you down, disarm both you and the people you're talking to, and have real conversations about things that matter. Um, so yeah, I, as a marketer, that's been my narrative. And I started in the, yeah, the digital marketing and the technology industry, uh, built an app that went on Dragon's Den that was about connecting people at um, their local eateries uh, based off what mood they're in. Kind of like Spotify meets Yelp. I'm in the mood for date night or I want to go out for a birthday. And actually mine was yesterday. Where did I go for that, right? So it was very much sentiment focused and we had some tech behind that and Went on Dragon's Den, and that was really fun. And of course, the, the mandate there was to bring people together through an experience that sparks better connections and more transfer of knowledge. Again, I use food as a way to connect people. And that basically evolved uh, into a marketing agency where it was, it was more so now, instead of having an app that's free for a bunch of people, what, I'm, what I was getting seen a lot more potential in, or at least more of a need in, was a lot of business owners who were listed on their app, they wanted more one-to-one -one advice on... Uh, growing their revenue and managing their debt better. Uh, and that's when we kind of built a more of a marketing agency where, yeah, we do coaching and consulting on digital products, specifically social media. And actually LinkedIn uh, is a big platform for us around actual one-to-one -one B2B selling, uh, which is really what that agency is focused on. It's still, it's still very much a thing. It's called Tangu. And my business partner, he's amazing. He's running most of that. And yeah, how to get into mortgages. So we basically um, started to niche out from just uh, marketing for restaurants to other small businesses or other verticals. But let's call them a bit more recession proof. And this is pre-COVID. This is a year ago, actually. And uh, we just almost threw a dart at the wall and said mortgage brokers. That was an industry that through a few advisors I was told was pretty underserved. Had no idea how any of it really worked. And God knows that, uh, you know, it, it, back at school, whether it's university, and I went to UBC, so out of school business, uh, any school you go to, no matter what level, financial literacy is not something that's easily accessible. You have to really seek it out, right? And as I'm sure your audience knows, and that's why they connect with you. So, so anyways, um, didn't know much about it, dove in, 
And I've said, okay, well, the best way to create great marketing solutions for mortgage brokers is to be the customer. So let me battle test our own products on myself, a total rookie, and let's see where that goes. Um, fast forward a year later, and um, that is now a big shift of focus for me. And uh, yeah, I'm basically originating mortgages for people that, whether it's those business owners that I, I was service at the agency or entrepreneurs that I meet in my everyday uh, day to day, it's how do I level them? How to help them increase their their borrowing potential or, their, or sorry, yeah, their borrowing potential and really just their income, right? Uh, through the means of, of helping them acquire a mortgage. So I guess my passion for coaching, bringing people together, helping you again, level up, just transferred over to the mortgage world. And I really, it's, I call it the finance and real estate world. because We do have plans to kind of expand our, our vision, but through marketing uh, and uh, I guess diving in and really trying to be the customer and, and thinking a certain way, we stumbled into some new opportunities where now we have two companies, they're sister companies, we have the agency and level up. And they work off each other, of course. And uh, I mean, yeah, as of this current day, right, June uh, uh, 2020, I'm very involved as actually, you know, originating mortgages with 50 plus lenders across Ontario and British Columbia. Wow. That's very cool. So for you, what was your, I mean, you just saw, saw it as a logical shift just to be able to add on the mortgage broker hat. So yeah. say. in some ways that people are people with, who know me well are telling me like, Paul, those are very different things. And until I tell them actually that are not, uh, doesn't make sense. And to answer your question, look, at the end of the day, as a marketer and someone who sells, like that's what you're, you're a persuader, right? You sell and you market and you help people understand something and be able to get their message out there in a certain way, Right. So that's what you do in the marketing agency, whether you're selling a client and or afterwards, you're helping them in turn sell to their customers with a soft sell, which is really marketing, education, and then boom, selling people through a personal relationship, through a one-to-one -one connection, right? So the mortgage industry is very similar. So the skill set of marketing, educating, adding value first, and then straight up, yeah, it sounds bad, but selling someone, not as a, you know, as the proverbial uh, use car salesman, but as like someone who generally wants to solve a problem for them. And I think the tactics are actually very similar. And yeah, I mean, I, I use my marketing agency to build my brand and just educate the industry. Cause I feel like there's a lot of miseducation or misinformation even on just how to qualify for a mortgage and save the most long term. And I do a lot on my YouTube channel, on my blog, Etc. to really just be like, hey, here's the, here's the data, here are the facts, here are the narratives of the true cases that I've worked on or people I know have worked on. I'm not gonna tell you how to do anything. You know what's best for you, but you at least wanna have the options out there in a simple way without you having to, of course, have to dive into lender policies and all that boring stuff. But I think uh, it's about the way you're educated and empowered. And then to some degree, if, if I stand firmly behind a certain kind of option, I'll be candid of what I think is good. At the end of the day, it's about empowering your clients. So long answer to your short question, uh, yeah, moved over as I found other ways to use sales and marketing in a way, in, in, in an arena where there's higher stakes, right? So it, first of all, you're helping people find a restaurant, right? If you think about the agency, that's kind of, I guess, the service. And then it becomes down to like, well, let's help people make, um, you know, a million dollar or a multi-million dollar decision on where they're going to live or $100,000 decision. So it's higher stakes using sales and marketing, but the, I guess the, the, the mantra of bringing people together and educating hasn't changed. And it really is all translated through proper marketing and sales. And through that, it's education, education, education. Right. And so on the mortgage side of things, while you focused on the entrepreneur side, what is that biggest problem that, that you're solving? Mm -hmm. The biggest problem uh, on the lending side, whether yeah you're a self-employed person or you're just a regular you know salaried employee, it comes down to affordability. People want to afford enough of a mortgage so they can get the house or you know the condo or whatever home that fits their not just their current lifestyle based off you know kids, family, but also where they're going. That's one thing. And secondly, I think for a lot of your audience too, like a lot of people are looking at the real estate asset class perhaps is a more stable one in the stock market given 
you know, the day and age we're in right now during COVID. So um, no matter if you have an investor hat on or just you know a lifestyle hat on, there's certain decisions that you can make today that are not just going to save you money long term. And that's where I was alluding to the whole getting the cheapest rate and or saving the most long term. They're different. Because the way we look at it is like, well, yeah, let's get you the best rate if we can. But also there's certain clauses behind products that might make it difficult for you to then grow your investment portfolio because of the debt to income ratios that certain lenders have, right? Or some lenders don't really accept as much rental income as you would want, and therefore you don't qualify with them. Some of them have big penalties that will effectively make your, you know, your 1.95 flash sale rate be a 5.5 after you add in the $40,000 penalty and you amortize that across 25 years. So you want to save those money over time. One lever is rape. There's also penalties, prepayment privileges. And of course, you also want to afford more in, in, in not just the first place you buy, but subsequent property. So that's where we do a lot of strategy. And honestly, a lot of it is increasing your income, managing your debt, and keeping your credit score high. And that's straight up just coaching, right? And as a salesperson, I do a lot of sales coaching as well, right? And that's the way to afford more is actually doing better in your business. So it's this kind of conglomerate of, again, what I've, what I've been uh, fine-tuning in the marketing uh, agency world where we're, we're coaching business owners to sell more. And then the strategic world in the mortgage industry where it's just about knowing the rules of the game with, of course, lender policies and lender options and merging that with you just being a better entrepreneur, you having more income, less debt, more profit. So it's kind of mixing those two worlds together, which I think gives us a unique edge. Yeah, for sure. And, and so on the on the for a business owner entrepreneur, mm -hmm. for them, sometimes what I've been running to what I do in my world is I see like people are trying to they're working with their accountant and the accountant saying, okay, well, pay yourself as little as possible so you don't pay as little tax. How right. does that impact mm -hmm. them getting money to purchase a house? Totally. So yeah, digging more into it. I mean, that was going to be my next train of thought is, well, first of all, accountants and mortgage brokers do not get along for obvious <laughs> reasons, right? So you have to find, uh, it's, since you're managing both parties, you have to know the rules of the game and you got to know, you got to find a perfect balance. So to your point, an accountant says write off everything. So you get, you pay less tax. It's obvious. You save money. Obviously you want to do that. But unfortunately, on the, on the mortgage side, most conventional lenders with the best rates will be like, oh, wow, you only declared 50K on your north of assessment? Cool, we're qualifying you based off of that income. You're like, well, we know I made 100K. They're like, no, but you declared 50, so you can't double dip. You can't pay no taxes and afford more. You got to find a balance, basically. And yeah, I mean, where that affects you is that if you write off too much, you qualify for less. So then you have to go to lenders that know that you're doing the write-off thing, and they know the banks are going to turn you down. But they're going to be a little bit more flexible. It's going to cost you. And that's okay, too. Some of them will just ask for six months worth of bank statements or stated income. Which is a, it's, a, it's basically a program where you state what income you actually bring in yourself. And, it's, and, and, and less and less lenders do that now. They want to see a bit more evidence. But there are ways to go with lenders that will be a lot more flexible. And, they, and it won't be that much more than a prime lender, which is actually really cool. As that industry gets more competitive, the alternative lending industry that's a big one that, of course, we focus in because there's there's accessibility. And if you run the numbers, it's not that much more to go with them, even just temporarily. You can always upgrade to a prime lender as you get certain things increased. So also, there's this sort of life cycle where it's not just getting a mortgage one and done. You can do a one-year mortgage with a B lender and then go to an A lender based off your credit score getting above X threshold or your income getting to a certain point. So there's a lot there, but basically, again, to your question, is you gotta find a balance between writing off income and what you can afford. You gotta do your math before and just get approved, get pre-approved, understand uh, the numbers and the different levers, and then work to um, work towards that goal, whatever that goal is. Right now, um, with, uh, I guess, going back to what you do in terms of you know all the, the coaching, educating, you're doing with mm -hmm. your clients, how much is there fear or knowledge about B lenders, you know, going from a bank down to a B lender, going to like a private lender, right? Like, yeah, let's break it down. Well, I mean, people confuse, first of all, people confuse, people think there's, there's the bank, the local bank, and there's loan sharks. That's a huge gap, huge gap. Maybe at one point in time that happened like a long time ago, but hey, in 2020, that gap is a lot smaller. So let's break down the numbers. Okay, so the different lenders. So a prime lender or an A lender, same thing. It's usually the banks, but guess what? 
There's wholesale lenders where all they do is mortgages and they actually have better rates than banks most of the time. And they're A lenders, they're federally regulated, they're just as legit. You just haven't heard of them because they're new and because they don't have, they don't have a retail location a lot of the times. So they rely on brokers like us to promote them properly because A, they're not very good at promoting themselves and B, they just, they're not around, right? But a lot of these guys have cheaper rates and the products are pretty good. So there's actually that side where a lot of people just don't even think about that. They just go to the bank. It's like, well, if you have got a great application, you can go to another lender with a better rate and maybe some better uh, features as well, smaller penalties. So there's that side of things, okay? And that's how things something that just gets people just don't even think about. Now, of course, if you don't qualify for an A lender, whether they're a bank or one of those these wholesale lenders, then sure, there's something like B lending. So example is, um, let's see, your credit score is below 600. You're not going to fit with most A lenders. And, that, and with the recent CMHC insurer news, that might become a bit more complicated as well. So then there's the credit score issue. Okay, so some B lenders are like, all right, fine. You either have low credit score, uh, your debt to income ratio, I usually look at how much income you make per month versus your debts, and they kind of qualify you off a percentage. You want to be below 44%. Some lenders can extend it up to 60, which means you can afford maybe you know 20% more, right? Uh, which is great. Uh, so depending on kind of why you're not working with, why the bank will not work with you, there are these B lenders that, you know, instead of a, let's say a two point, well, I'm seeing like a 1.98 today with some pretty legit lenders. It's super low as of this recording, but usually it's, let's say a 2.3 fixed rate, let's say. Uh, the lowest a B lender or an alt lender will do, I've seen, I've seen 3.65. So, so one number looks a lot bigger than the other, but like, what's the math behind it? So, you, you know, you take a $330,000 mortgage. That's the average size usually, right? Five-year term. Um, the delta, let's call it, let's just call it one. The delta is one. 2.67 is 3.65. Super common thing, right? Over five years, you're probably saving 5K. So if you're paying 5K more, that's not that much more, actually. And actually... Let's rewind a little bit. Let's rewind a little bit. With an alternative lender, they'll usually do smaller terms. They'll do like a one-year term where maybe you're only paying a couple thousand more. Keep in mind, there's also the lender fee, which is usually a percentage of the mortgage. Let's say you've been paying five, $6,000 more for that one year, but you access a property that a year from now will be worth a lot more than the 7,000 you paid. So it's opportunity cost. So you can get short contracts, you might pay five or six thousand, seven thousand dollars more for that one year, but you have access to capital. You can get that home you want. You're no longer paying rent. And again, assuming that property goes up even three percent, that will probably cover that small, let's call it paper cut you're getting uh, in that one year. So B lenders are great for having them as a crutch. And again, once you get to a point where your credit score is back where it needs to be, or your income's higher, or your debt's lower, then I can move you over to a prime lender at a lower rate. But you're in the market. You've been in the market for a year. You have that asset. So that's, that's where B lenders are great. And sure, private lenders will... So B lenders are usually between 3.65 and let's say, well, 5.99. The best private lender will usually be about 6%. And then, yeah, sure, that goes all the way up to like 15%. If you're doing a second mortgage with a group of individuals, like it can get to the loan shark level. But there's a lot of institutionalized private lenders who will do 6 7%. And again, they'll, they'll always do it per, per basis. They, you can't ever get like an out-of-the-box quote. But even 6 7% ain't terrible to do for an open term. Like because open term means you can do it for three months, six months, if you're doing a renovation or you really need the capital. So there's flexibility in those tools where don't use them unless you have to, but don't shut yourself up from the market by thinking, oh, it's a loan chart. Oh, it's not my bank. So be smart about your options. And every day, as those markets get more competitive, they have to all lower the prices, <laughs> or the, it, it, which is good for the for the end consumer in the end. So that's a bit of, uh, I guess, the the broad range of like a prime lender to a loan shark. There's a lot of stuff in between, and you can always go between them pretty seamlessly. And that's where the strategy part kicked in. And a lot of mortgage mortgage brokers don't bother going through the strategy. They just sell you the mortgage and they're off to the next. That sucks. That's why they, a lot of them get a bad rep. So it comes down to education strategy. Yeah, it's more than just a a transaction, right? For sure. I mean, if you're thinking, if you're thinking long term, which yeah, a lot of people sometimes don't, or they don't 
they don't give the perception of that, uh, which, yeah, it comes down to customer experience. What uh, what do you see happening? Maybe it's too early to see. I know that there are some um, some things coming in from the CMHC, but you know, mm-hmm. how do you see the the market going over the next? I don't even know how long we look six, twelve, eighteen months so Right. So CMHC, which of course uh, is owned by the government, and that's um, where you get your mortgage default insurance, especially if you're paying under twenty percent. Right. Uh, they have said, you know, I guess famously the last month they put out a press release. It's going to go down eight to eight to eight to or nine to eighteen percent in the next eighteen months. It might, it might not. That's pretty generalized. Who knows? But it's clear they're starting to go down, right? Um, and I don't know. I mean, based off of that, uh, it's an opportunity for a lot of people, right? Um, and capital is really cheap as well, right? As far as the uh, cost of borrowing, one point nine eight. On a variable, I'm seeing. I mean, we can get as low as a 1.78 as of today. Crazy. That'll probably change in the next little bit, but it's a great time to get into it. But of course, people are getting a little greedy and they're waiting for it goes down more. As you play the waiting game, there's variables that come in, right? Uh, CMHC, of course, they have the announcement about upping the minimum credit score and also your debt to income ratio is now a little bit tighter, which means you effectively could lose 15% of your buying power. So there's all these things that, that, that just come, right? And the more you wait, if you're chasing that slightly lower rate over time, there's the risk that, again, you're, in the, you're out of the market longer, so you're paying rent, and there's that opportunity cost factor. But also, because of that imminent recession, CMHC is tightening their lender policy. So you're starting to lose. So, so as those things get tightened up, you now have less access to capital. And then the rates might go up. And then maybe the property you're looking to, go, to see decrease in value never actually decrease in value. So then you just... You know, you, you, you screwed up, right? Uh, or, of course, you know, it, it's, it's up to your risk tolerance. But, yeah, maybe the property goes down in value. Capital stays pretty low, cost of capital, which I think will stay, it'll stay low for a while, especially if even off variable, right? Um, and, yeah, maybe you time it a little bit better and off you go, right? But I guess two sides to that is, like, don't expect things to come tumbling down and then for you to be the first one there, you get the, you get the big, the best deal. Cause remember, like if you're not bold about things and you follow the market, uh, you, you're probably going to be in a bidding war and, or you're probably going to be at a point where the market kind of has caught up and the rates are higher. And it just, I think if anything, it's the first mover advantage, I think, but also, you know, you don't want to rush it because, Oh, like this rate may not be around forever or, you know what, or, or or the market might change the way I don't want it to because if you're not like physically ready for a home, it doesn't make sense for you. You know, you don't do a proper due diligence on the home itself. Your business is in a bit of an uncertain spot. Like just because you wanted to get a deal now might come back to bite you if you're not prepared. So I think like be prepared as much as possible. Get a pre-approval. Know where you're at today. Just think about your lifestyle and your family and where you want to be. See the timing's good there. And if all that's lined up, then get pre-approved now. Because if you see something tomorrow that's amazing, you got to be ready to pounce. And if you don't see something that fits you or what you want or is, is not as amazing as you would deem it necessary to be, then wait it out. But at least you know where you stand. A lot of people have no idea where they stand. They just react last minute. They're scrambling with things and they realize, oh, crap, I've had a low credit score for a long time. And now, I, now, now I've got to wait where you could preemptively have known that you were at below 600 and start to, start to do credit rebuilds as you were waiting for the market to go down. So like, just know where you stand, I guess, is what it comes down to. <laughs> and again, you've, you've opened up some interesting tangents here, but yeah, I'll let you run with that. But hopefully that answered your question around, yeah, yeah CMHC and just a bit of the market, where it might be going and how you can react to that. Yeah, I think it's... Um, to your point, some of the things you've mentioned throughout is just like think long term, plan it out. Don't be overreactive. You're not locked in. If you plan it out right, there's lots of flexibility. Don't worry about who you go with. You can do something short term to get you to something, yeah. you know, that'll suit you longer term mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, do one of the things you mentioned rebuilding credit is that something yeah. you coach people along doing for or sure. credit credit scores? I should say yeah. or yeah, I've got a, again, maybe something you can link in the show notes. Uh, I do have a blog post that has a written out, like a big list around well, what goes into your credit score. What are the five C's of credit? How to rebuild those habits you can you can put into it to build it up. I've got a video that mirrors that as well. So yeah, lots of resources. One thing is just onto you. It's not rocket science. You read the article, watch the video, 
then put a plan together. It's really not tough. You just have to like actually do it. But then, yeah, some people have very specific circumstances where there's a bit more consultation needed. And if it's something I can answer, I mean, we'll talk about it. And if it's like really kind of like, you know, you've been to a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal, then yeah, I might also connect you with some of my industry partners who might have a tech startup that's all about rebuilding your, your, your credit score. So I have those resources. And again, that's where my connection to the outside mortgage world, the tech industry, the marketing world. There's a lot of interesting uh, connections I like to make there that can help you level up. It's all about personal growth. That's what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. And really just being, it's going back to the more than just the transaction, the consultative part of it is like so, so uh, important to the process. Um, yeah, for, for you, like what's, what's kind of next? You've uh, started the marketing, added in mortgage. What's the next piece you mentioned? There's something else. Um, yeah. Um, well, look, end of the day, and this is sort of like, I mean, maybe entrepreneurial advice or realizations, like I've got a lot of ideas. I've got a, you know, a just cause of reshaping education in financial literacy and personal development and how that will come to, how that will come to be only time will tell. And I'm starting to do it with the mortgage business, the marketing business, a lot of interesting sales training, marketing training, um, customer experience training that are embedded in those businesses. But yeah, I, I, I'm big on education and I, I do see myself starting to move into building, building um, retreats, online retreats where it's a mastermind. You're going over a curriculum, you're leveling up, whether it be the focus of sales, marketing, or personal finance. So whether it's, uh, it's actual, again, experiential learning opportunities uh, and or just digital courses or digital products. That's really where I want to put everything long term because I think a lot of things you can do self research on, or at least do research on in the company of other inspiring individuals. And it's almost like a, a group coaching thing. I really believe in group coaching. So yeah, I mean, to start building that curriculum and that and those systems, I mean, you obviously have to, you know, uh, prove it out more test more things and with me being in the trenches as I am now. And also you, I may go the route of just scaling the mortgage company, recruiting more awesome uh, mortgage brokers to get educated through the things I learned the hard way. Uh, again, I think the sales and marketing uh, training is a huge, huge thing that, I mean, as you can tell, I love, I love to talk about and also implement. Um, so we'll see, but it's about empowering people around you and it starts with your client and then it starts with your team members and then you can scale that through again some form of uh, experiential uh, coaching uh, and, and courses. So how that comes together, we'll see. Yeah, that's right. Um, it and that's, I guess you you have lots of ideas that are that are coming to fruition and uh, building around it. You got to um, you've proven that you you know as opportunity comes, you can jump into that and. So that may be what you see now may actually change over time too, right? And, and, and it definitely will. Yeah. It'll evolve. But if the intent, like what's your intent as an entrepreneur, right? Like when you think about like, what's your intent? Like, where do you want to go, right? Uh, if that's really clear, like let's call that personal mission statement, then as opportunities arise, you will be, you will get guided towards it, right? And it'll come together in, in some shape or form. I think that's the key. Uh, and I'm getting a clear vision of what that might materialize as, but no, things will evolve. Things will change. There'll be new opportunities, but end of the day for someone to level up, to grow, to be a better sales and marketer, like that's something I see as being quite evergreen. And again, I'm, I'm finding different ways to allow people to have those skills either as a business or heck as a new graduate from a university who has to go sell themselves uh, and or start a, a side hustle and has no idea how to do it. I'm really passionate about the, the you know, the, the, the graduate, um, that's that gap between graduating and actually finding something that like fits who you are. I mean, that's basically your twenties, right? <laughs> Which is, it, it's, I mean, the self-discovery is, is all part of the fun, but I think that process could be accelerated a lot faster with better mentors, um, you know, who you work with better education and better, again, uh, additional education opportunities through masterminds and courses that's huge yeah for sure um so i guess we, we get we're to the kind of the point where i think i want people to know how to get a hold of you right like in sure. terms of <laughs> either as a as a client for mortgage broker or any of the coaching any of that what's the best mm -hmm. way for them to get a hold of you 
Sure. Well, I mean, all the social networks are uh, are pretty available. I mean, I mean, first of all, the website is levelupmortgages.com. Uh, I mean, look me up on Instagram, right? Just as you see my name here, Paul David Eskew. And if you type that into Google, you'll probably see my Facebook, my LinkedIn, etc. So yeah, get in touch that way. My, my number is usually, I think it's on the website. So I'm pretty open. And I think that I, I'm all about accessibility. And, and not even so much about like, call me when you're ready for a mortgage. It's Call me if you have the motivation to one day get a mortgage or to grow your small business or to, or to pick my brain on like, what are the best books to read to get a certain level? Like, I don't need you to be like committed to me before you call. I'm pretty open and available through different channels to just get people in the early stages to think the right way. So a lot of people are like, I'm going to reach out till, I, till I'm ready. Well, fair enough. You probably won't have a half hour call with me. And let, I mean, none of us want to have it unless you're ready to you know, get a mortgage from that respect. But if it's about personal development or even things where you just want to know if you're doing the right things, that's a smart way to do it. And I'm super happy to, yeah, to help, to help with that. And a lot of it on the YouTube channel, actually, if you go to YouTube, level up mortgages, a lot of materials there where I do, uh, as I was telling you offline, uh, a lot of entrepreneurship interviews with entrepreneurs in real estate, fintech, uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, in, in personal finance, uh, but also I've got my educational videos. So whether it's, again, like just my resources or getting in touch with me through an Instagram DM, knock yourself out. I'd love to connect and hopefully some things here resonate and uh, everyone's on a journey and uh, it's always exciting to people develop and grow within that. Yeah, well, Paul, thank you very much for sharing your story and how you uh, help others, business owners, other people. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Peter. Super appreciate it. Thank you for taking time to listen to the Cash Flow Canucks podcast. You'll be able to find out more about our guests and how to connect with them in the show notes for this episode. Would you like to learn the secret way savvy investors and smart entrepreneurs are turning their expenses into positive cash flow? Then you want to read the Infinite Banking Concept book. For a limited time, I am giving away free copies of this book valued at $30. If you want a copy, just email me, Peter, with the subject line book to peter at cashflowcanucks.ca. Again, if you want a free copy of the Infinite Banking Concept book, just email me at peter at cashflowcanucks.ca with the subject line book and your mailing address and I'll send you a copy. You'll finally understand how the wealthy elite is turning everyday expenses into cash flow. Just email me at peter at cashflowcanucks.ca.